Hello there my fellow notebook aficionados and welcome back to the channel. It's time for another Lenovo Legion and right here in front of me I have the Abar Midrange Pro 5. This one is actually the first notebook in the studio with Team Red Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7745HX beating at its heart. And since we also reviewed another Legion Pro 5 but with Intel's mainstream i7-13700HX, we are up to a very interesting comparison. So let us see what these chips can deliver within the same chassis and if we can finally answer the age old question, which pill will it be, red or blue? The Legion Pro 5 is available in a plethora of configurations ranging across a variety of CPU, GPU and display options. But we will of course focus on the two machines we have been able to review so far. Our Intel based Pro 5 came with the before mentioned i7-13700HX, 16GB of DDR5, 4800 memory, a 512GB SSD and an RTX 4060. The Ryzen version pairs the 7745HX with an RTX 4070, 16GB of DDR5 5600 RAM and double the storage. In the display department both legions come with the same 16x10 QHD Plus panel refreshing at 165Hz. In terms of chassis design Lenovo refined the Pro 5 slightly compared to last year's offering. The mid-range gamer looks sleeker and a little less aggressive than its 2022 counterpart. Which is quite welcome since these puppies make for excellent workstation hybrids if you want to use these for more than just video games. Build quality is excellent and the 16 inch gamer feels reassuringly dense, albeit at the expense of a bit more weight than the direct competition. Lenovo continues to trend of class leading port selection and carries over a similar arrangement from the high end Legion Pro 7s. While we sorely miss Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 respectively, the Legion makes more than up for it with the sheer amount of connectivity. On the left you can find a single USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and a USB-C of the faster 3.2 Gen 2 variety. The right is absent of ports for us right-handed mouse users apart from a single additional USB-A 3.2 Gen 1. If you are like me and prefer a cleaner setup before easier access, you will absolutely love the arrangement in the back, consisting of two additional USB-A 3.2 Gen 1s, another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with up to 140 watts of power delivery, an HDMI 2.1, the power connector and a gigabit Ethernet jack. While we have seen improvements when it comes to webcams and gaming laptops, the Legion has to make do with a 1080p sensor, but still offers a usable picture with ok sharpness and natural colors. In the maintenance department Lenovo's midranger offers easy access to a pair of SODEMs and NVMe slots. And the Wi-Fi card is swappable as well should you need to upgrade or repair anything in the future. Regarding inputs we get a similar layout as we have seen on the high end legions already with standard sized keys in the main area and smaller keycaps for the numpad. Travel is very generous with 1.5mm and overall this is a very comfortable and satisfying keyboard for both longer typing sessions as well as intense gaming hours. The touchpad does the trick as well and worked reliably and without issues during our testing. The displays we have tested on both units may look identical on paper, but the Intel version is supplied by a different manufacturer and suffered from much more pronounced backlight bleed than our AMD powered Pro 5. This does not necessarily mean that all Intel SKUs will be the same though, since brightness uniformity differs from panel to panel. In general though both displays provide a solid but not very exciting viewing experience with average brightness and okayish contrast numbers. Unfortunately there are no display options with wider color gamuts available, but this also holds true for the high end Pro 7s. Factory calibration on the other hand is very good, with both panels coming in at a delta E below 2, making color critical work within the sRGB color space possible for both video and photo editing. When it comes to speed, the AMD model scores a win as well with a marginally better response time for black to white and a solid lead in our grey to grey measurements. Again we do not know if all AMD and Intel machines behave the same, but it's still something to be aware of. Alright folks, let's talk performance and let us kick things off with the ultimate battle of mainstream gaming CPUs in 2023. On the Intel side of things, the Raptor Lake i7-13700HX comes with 8 hyper threading enabled performance cores and 8 additional efficiency cores, whereas the AMD variant is betting on a more traditional 8 core 16 thread layout. 
In our Cinebench 15 loop that we still use to see how well CPUs can maintain their performance, both chips perform almost on par with each other and even in our combined performance rating that takes several different benchmarks with both single and multi-core loads into account, our results are within 5% with a slight edge for Team Red's Zen 4 Silicon. If you are interested into individual benchmark scores, please make sure to head over to our written reviews. My colleague Alan did a great job testing both machines thoroughly. System performance is excellent for both configurations, but not directly comparable, since we are dealing with different GPUs in here. In the storage department, the Intel SKU is able to edge out the Samsung drive found in the AMD Legion Pro 5. But both models offer very snappy NVMe SSDs that should not leave you wanting for a whole lot more. For some reason, the drive in the Zen 4 Lenovo also experiences throttling during our prolonged benchmark runs. It's probably not something you would notice during everyday use, but we still want you to be aware of it. On the GPU side of things, both legions perform above average for their respective GPU options. That said, the RTX 4070 in the AMD SKU is only barely faster than last year's 3070 Ti in our 3 Mark rating, while the RTX 4060 in the Intel Legion is able to score a much more profound lead over its 2022 sibling. Blender also shows very little difference here, making the 4070 a very tough sell if you are into more content creation oriented workloads. This even carries over to our gaming rating that puts both models once more directly on par. Just keep in mind that these are older titles that are much more CPU than GPU bound, but nonetheless the difference here should be much bigger. Thankfully, the RTX 4070 can widen its lead in the native resolution of its display and can score a pretty consistent 10-15% to plus in average frame rates over its smaller sibling. To give you a more detailed overview of what to expect from the RTX 4070 and the AMD 7745HX, we tested some additional titles in Full HD, QHD and 4K. Fan noise is also within margin of error for both variants, so for those of you hoping the efficiency benefits of the Zen 4 chip might give you some real-world advantage, well, you will be left disappointed. During our stress test, both legions also showed some very interesting behavior. During Prime 95, the Intel chip would stabilize at about 117 watts and 81C, while the Ryzen chip would steadily sit between 90 to 100C during the same test at 90 watts. The higher temperatures are most likely the result of much higher maintained clock speeds, sitting at 4.6 GHz, while the i7-13700HX had to bring things down to a much more reasonable 3.3 to 3.6 GHz. Despite both GPUs having a 140 watts power target, we never ever saw anything close from either Nvidia card. In our 1 hour Witcher 3 test, both cards would sit around 100 to 110 watts max. Again, for a much more detailed overview into performance and temperature behavior, please head over to our written review. We also took some noise samples to give you a more subjective impression of what to expect from the Legion Pro 5. Please be aware that I only have the AMD version at hand. A lot of you guys have been holding out for AMD equipped gaming notebooks, having high hopes that the Zen 4 chips enable longer battery life compared to Intel. Unfortunately, the situation might not be this easy in 2023, and while the AMD Legion Pro 5 lasts longer than its Team Blue contender, it is only by about half an hour during our standard Wi-Fi test. So in the end, which Legion should you go for? Considering that judging from our results, both CPUs perform pretty much on par with each other, with similar fan noise albeit higher temps on the AMD chip, I would go as far as to say that it simply does not really matter. If you would use either one of those without knowing what silicon they are running, you would be hard pressed to notice any difference at all. Furthermore, I put these configurations together on both the German and the US website, and the difference in pricing is not really that different as well. 
So it either comes down to what brand of CPUs tickles your fancy a little bit more or whichever one of these might be on sale at the time of your desired purchase. In general though, the Legion Pro 5 remains a very, very solid option in the mid-range gaming notebook market and offers quite a lot no matter if you solely use it for virtual entertainment or some sort of workstation hybrid. But please guys, sound off in the comments below which one you would prefer. Please do not forget to like this video on your way out and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex, you have been absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.